Stay all day. Stay all day. You are now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. What is that? That is the go-getter energy that moves everyone, including yourself and me to go and make things happen instead of wait for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that is called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today, here's what we're gonna talk about today. And today we're gonna talk about why nobody deserves what is now being labeled as a living wage quote living wage this is a new phrase this is one of those new age phrases that some people have come up with and it is a a clever a clever technique that some people have come up with to describe what is known as some other things we're going to get into that in a second i'm going to get into why i'm saying this and i will back up my point i will back up my argument because some of you may look at the title of this and say dre i disagree that people do deserve a living wage well wait a minute 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 Wait a damn minute, let me make my point and explain to you why I'm saying what I'm saying before you draw a conclusion about the title, okay? Don't judge the episode by the title, all right? Judge it by the actual content of the material, but we'll get into that in a moment. First of all, let me do what I gotta do and let you all know that I have a daily motivation text message that I send out for free to everyone who's in my text community. If you would like to receive this message that is guaranteed to keep you focused, sharp, and on point, then all you gotta do is send me a text at my number, which is 305-384-6894. And every day when I send out that daily motivation, because you are on my list, you'll be receiving that message directly to your phone, guaranteed, as I said, to keep you focused, sharp, and on point. Now, to this topic of the living weeds, let me tell you where I'm, what actually sparked the idea for this episode. Uh, a few weeks ago, from when I am recording this, I was having a conversation with a young lady who was working at the front desk of my building. A very nice young lady, very polite, uh, good uh, energy. She had a good uh, attitude. You know, like I say in business, you want to hire for attitude and train for skills. She had the good attitude. I have no idea what her skill set was, but she did have the proper attitude. And she was telling me how she was looking for other work opportunities because the job that she was working at at the time wasn't paying her enough money and she wanted to make more money. So she was looking for other opportunities and would probably leave that job as soon as she found a better opportunity. Now, I haven't seen this lady in a while, so I think she did actually leave and maybe she did. I'm assuming that she did find a better opportunity. All right, and that's a good idea. Actually, I am completely agree with her idea up to this point. Everything was on point. And I asked her what other jobs she was looking at and she was telling me what other jobs she was considering and how some other people who lived in the building had floated some ideas to her and possibilities to her. She asked me if I had any job opportunities myself or if I knew somebody who did. We chatted about it for a bit and it got around to a point where I asked her, okay, well, how much money do you want to make or need to make at a new job if you were to take a new job? And she thought about it for a second. She took a breath and then she said, I need to earn a living wage. She said that, and she put a period at the end of the statement. She just said a living wage. Now I asked her, okay, what exactly does that mean when you say a living wage? And she gave me some numbers and thinking about it more and the conversation continued and I didn't really, I didn't really respond to her living wage statement, but I thought about it a little bit more after she had said what she said and it led to what became today's episode. So we're going to get into it. I don't need to give any more explanation uh, or any more background to the point. Let me just get right into the point so you'll get right where I stand on this and why I'm saying what I'm saying. Point number one, topic once again is nobody deserves a living wage. This whole living wage phrase, this is one of these new, this is one of these new uh, change the conversation, change the, change the language things that some people have done. I guess you call these people progressives, I guess is the best way to describe them. These progressives who have come up with this, they come up with this whole uh, go against the dictionary thing of changing up the language and the phrasing of certain things. So such as to expand what is acceptable or change what is acceptable in certain places. So for example, you know, any adult over the age of 18 or either over the, over the age of 18 or over the age of 21 who was interested in any type of sexual activity with people under the age of 18, which are usually known as children, we used to call those people pedophiles, right? And they were shunned in the community and they would go to jail. But now, the, there are some people, I don't think all people who label themselves progressives are doing this, but there are some progressives who are trying to call these people, what are they calling them? Um, there's a certain word. 
damn, the word is escaping me. I can't remember what the word was, but they're calling them youth attracted people or uh, child attracted people or uh, what's the word? There's a adolescent attracted or youth attracted people. That's what they're calling them now. Instead of just calling them what they are, which are pedophiles, which usually get you in jail and nobody wants to be around any person who has that label on them. But now youth attracted persons, it sounds much softer and it sounds much more acceptable. That's one thing the progressives have done. Another thing they did, instead of just saying uh, who's capable of giving birth, we know that to give birth you need a woman who was born with a vagina. But instead of saying that, now they're saying there was a woman who actually works and a woman. She works at a university. I don't remember which university she works at, but she's a professor. And she was called to Washington, D.C. and she appeared in front of the Senate. And she was being questioned by a Republican senator by the name of Josh Hawley. I know his name because I've seen him a few times in uh, certain media spaces. And he was asking this woman, he was trying to kind of nail her down specifically on what exactly a woman is. <coughs> and this woman, this, she was a, I know she was a black woman, I don't remember her name. And she works at a university as a professor and she continually used the phrase, uh, people who are capable of giving birth. That was the phrase that she kept using. Instead of just saying a woman, she said, people who are capable of giving birth. Like, what the hell does that mean? Instead of just saying a woman, it's that a person capable of giving birth. And here's the thing that I want you all to remember. I talked about this a few episodes ago. We call this Occam's razor, that anytime somebody use, needs to use 10 words to explain something that they could explain in two words, or you need to be very wary of what this person is telling you because is not because some people just are long winded and they just some people can get in rambling they like to talk a lot and like to explain things that's not what i mean what i mean is when people are doing this stuff instead of just saying a you're a pet a pedophile because you're interested in kids and that's illegal according to the law at least it has been up to this point and now you're changing it to the minor attracted persons that's the word minor attracted persons and you're changing it to that okay now this person might be trying to pass some bullshit under your nose without you noticing or saying a person who is capable of giving birth instead of just saying a woman uh, that's that's kind of crazy right that might be something crazy happening there you need to pay very close attention to what these people are doing and, and watch your back all right whenever they whenever they are in the room all right what this is what these people are doing they are basically taking these ideas that we have already established as what they are and they're morphing the language to make it sound like something else that and here's the here's the big part of it of why they're changing the language because the question is not whether they're changing the language we know this this is happening the question is why are they changing the language the reason why they're making these changes to the language is because they're trying to expand the definition of certain terms so that it sounds like something that nobody wants to you don't want to deny it like a person who's a pedophile we already know all right send them to jail all right don't have them around me don't have them around my kids they can't come within 500 feet of a school zone but a minor attracted person just sounds like, all right, you're just attracting the minors. I guess that's not that bad, right? It just sounds softer. Or a person who is capable of giving birth. Like, what the hell does that mean? So we're trying to expand this definition to mean, uh, last I checked, there's only two types of uh, humans. You got men, you got women. Uh, that's pretty much it. So who else, who fits in this definition of people capable of giving birth? I don't know, right? But there are people out there who will, who will sit here and argue tooth and nail with you as to what that means. And now, this is the this is the one of the other ones they got now. It's calling it a living wage, okay? And the purpose of using the phrase living wage instead of what we used to call it, and I'll get to that in a minute, is because it sounds much more, it sounds softer, and it sounds much more like a thing that, who would want to say no to that, right? Who would want to say no to giving somebody a living wage? If you come to apply for a job with me, and we sit down and we talk, and I'm interested in you, and I say, okay, what are your salary expectations? Then you say, a living wage, well, I would sound like a complete, I would just sound like a complete monster and a terrible person to say, well, no, I'm not gonna give you a, and I say, well, how much is a living wage? You give me a number, and I say, well, no, I'm not gonna give you that number, and you say, well, wait, what are you saying, Dre? You're gonna deny me a living wage? It makes me sound like a complete idiot and asshole. I don't wanna give you a living wage, because a living wage, this phrase, this is actually a strategic victory for the progressives to even have gotten this concept out into the, the mainstream, because a living wage sounds like what? sounds like a basic necessity that everybody deserves to have. Right, why would, who am I to deny you a living wage? Who is the government to deny you a living wage? Who is any boss or supervisor or tech writer? Who are you to deny any person a living wage? Right, you don't want to give somebody enough to live? All right, that makes you sound terrible, right? Sounds like a basic necessity. So it's no wonder that this woman working at the front desk of my building, again, with her entry level skills, and we're going to get to that in a minute. She has entry level skills, which is why she's in a position of saying that she needs a living wage she believes that she deserves to earn a quote-unquote living wage 
Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing I would say about this young lady is that she can probably go and get the amount of money that she says she wants to make, and if that's what she considers a living wage, but she's not going to get it because she called it a living wage. She's going to get it based on other things. And see, this is the part that I want you all to get from me. See, it's not that I'm going to deny anybody to make a living wage, whatever you consider that amount to be, because not everybody even agrees what the number is, is that if you make this much money, whatever that number is for you, that minimum number is for you, it's not going to be because you said, well, I deserve a living wage. It's going to be because you showed that you are actually worth it. All right. And this is the, the approach. All right. Because you might get the money by calling it a living wage, depending on who you're talking to. If you can kind of scare them or guilt them or shame them into giving you something because you said they should. Or you can go earn it because you're actually worth it. All right. And this is what I call playing the game. And that's what we're going to talk about as we go further into today's episode. We're still on point number one here. See, Living wage sounds a lot better than it actually is. See, what we now call a living wage, any of you who's over the age of 30, now, you know what we used to call this. We used to call this the minimum wage. And the, your host, who you're listening to right now, I worked at jobs where I earned a minimum wage. I earned a minimum wage at McDonald's. I earned a minimum wage at Pizza Hut. I earned a minimum wage at, where else was I working? I was either at or pretty damn close to the minimum wage. I worked at Reader's Water Ice, at CVS, at movie theaters. I worked a whole bunch of jobs where I was earning at or close to a minimum wage. And if I, it wasn't the minimum wage, it was a, a few quarters above a minimum wage. But then now they changed it to the living wage. And I've heard that, and some actually, I mean, minimum, they call it a living wage, period. New, for, new thought. Some people I've heard have said that this should be called, instead of calling it a living wage or if you don't want to call it a minimum wage because maybe that makes some people feel harmed and hurt and it feels like they're being talked down upon by being told that they are a minimum wage employee and listen there are minimum wage employees out there all right if you are a minimum wage employee don't be mad at the fact that it's called minimum wage be mad at the fact that you're it right, that's that's the way i look at it but okay all right let me let's offer a compromise here if you don't want to call it a minimum wage let's give it a different term we're not going to call it a living wage because if you ain't good enough to earn that much then that doesn't mean you deserve it Maybe we can call it a starting wage. All right, that's, that's a fair, I'm good with calling it a starting wage if we're not gonna call it a minimum wage. I'm also good with calling it an entry level wage. That's good too. I worked at a bunch of entry level jobs and actually every career has an entry level. Every career has an entry level. So the entry, an entry level uh, computer coder might make you know, 90 grand a year, but that's entry level. But when you get to a higher level, you make a lot more. But an entry level, you no know, fry guy at McDonald's, you might make $9 an hour, all right? That's the deal. Now, it depends on what you are entering into. All right? What's the entry level and the thing that you're doing? So I agree what we can call it a starting wage or entry level wage. That, that language, starting or entry level, is much more accurate to what it actually is. Because most entry level jobs, at the same time, have a career path that allows people to put in their time, develop skills, demonstrate your reliability, and you can move up the food chain. I mean, this is why it's called entry level. You are entering there. It doesn't mean you have to stay there. You can stay there if you want to, but you can move up if you want to move up. When I worked at McDonald's, for example, a bunch of us, we were all around the same age. We were all around 17, 18 years old. We were all no goofing off kids who didn't think that we were, or didn't plan on working at McDonald's for the rest of our lives. None of us worked there anymore. And we would be just be back there playing around, you know, eating chicken nuggets, you no know, making jokes, eating fries, laughing, you no know, playing around, putting stickers on each other's backs, talking about rap music and basketball and all different types of stuff, just basically goofing off. There was one guy who worked there when I worked there at McDonald's, and we all started at the same time. We were all around the same as this guy named Cecil. He worked there, and Cecil was like, he would laugh at some of the stuff that we would joke about, but he wasn't all involved in the conversations. He wouldn't be in there telling jokes himself. He would laugh sometimes, but he wasn't like, he'd kind of be off to the side and what we were doing. He took the job a little bit more seriously and the management noticed that he took the job a little bit more seriously. So after a few months, Cecil got promoted in McDonald's. He got promoted to what they call a key holder, which is kind of like not a manager, but not an entry level worker either. So he got a little bit of a pay bump. So who knows, maybe they gave him another 50 cents per hour. And he was the kind of guy who, if there was some kind of uh, discrepancy at the register and a, the frontline worker, we were the backline workers on the, on the fries, and they were frontline people working the register, we all making the same amount of money. But if, let's say, a customer asked for a refund or a, the person working the register keyed something in the wrong way and needed to be overridden by a manager, they could call Cecil, and Cecil could put in his little code and he could override things. So he had a little bit more authority than any of us did. He didn't tell anybody what to do, but he had a little bit more authority and I'm guessing he made a couple cents more per hour. The whole point being, Cecil was starting to move up in the chain of McDonald's. Now, I don't know how far Cecil went. I stopped working at McDonald's to, before I got to see uh, Cecil's ascension. I don't know where he's working now, shout out to Cecil. But <laughs> the whole point is, 
these entry level jobs have a path. You can move up. Back in the days, those of you who are, again, old enough to remember, if you're over the age of 30, you probably remember back when we used to watch TV to get our media before smartphones, McDonald's used to have commercials. And I remember there was a commercial, there was a guy, it was a fictional guy, and a McDonald's commercial, his name was Calvin. And it was this guy, Calvin, he'd be, it was like this urban, the commercial would be in this urban setting, and these guys are like standing on the corner, sitting on the stoop, sitting on the steps, talking, and they see Calvin walking by, and Calvin, hey, what's up, guys? And his friends would look at him like, man, Calvin, he's still flipping those burgers at Mickey D's, and he'd be going to his job at McDonald's, he had on his nice, clean, pressed McDonald's uniform, his little McDonald's hat, he'd be going to work at McDonald's, and the whole point of the commercial, as they would show in the commercials, that Calvin would work in McDonald's for some time, then eventually he would move up, he would get a better job, he eventually became a manager, and maybe even, I don't remember the exact how the commercial progressed, but maybe even to the point that Calvin became a franchise owner of a McDonald's, all because he started at the entry level, he just kept working, was a good worker, and eventually he moved up and got a great career working at McDonald's. The whole point being, I'm telling you that story to tell you, that all entry level jobs have a career path where you can eventually move up and ascend, make more money and have a higher position. This is the point of entry level jobs. It gives people with very little skill a way to get into the space, learn while you earn and you can move up. Right, this, is the whole this is the whole purpose. Almost every business has this. Any of you who's done any type of network marketing, this is exactly what it is. You get in at the bottom level, you learn, you make money while you're learning, hopefully, eventually you move up, move up, move up based on your performance. This is the game. All right, this is what happens in every career. Every business works like this. All right. Before I got into professional sports, I had several entry level jobs. Fast food restaurants, sit down restaurants, fast casual, fitness centers, convenience stores, movie theaters, work study jobs, all at or close to minimum wage. At a couple of these jobs, I lasted long enough to get a pay raise. I was even able to manage a promotion or two. And had I stayed at all of those jobs, let's say I stayed working at you know, McDonald's or the, the water ice stand or some or Pizza Hut or the movie theater for the last 20 years instead of doing what I did without pro sports or any of this work on your game stuff, hopefully, hopefully, by now I'd be a head manager or a regional manager at one of these places by this point in my life. All right, that's the way that it's set up. It is designed to allow you to move up if you are willing to do the work. This is not a right or wrong thing, it's just the truth. Moving on to point number two. Today's topic, once again, is nobody deserves a living wage, especially not just because, just by, you know, the, by your presence of being alive, you don't deserve anything. Number two, as I explained in episode 2112, you only deserve something when you have it. Uh, you don't deserve something just because you say somebody should give it to you or just because some uh, politician or your favorite influencer told you that you deserve it. All right, that is a bullshit argument. And if that's the only argument you have, you need to get a better one. All right, this new concept of changing the phrase minimum wage to living wage makes it seem harsh when you say that somebody doesn't deserve it. So it makes me seem like some heartless monster, right, to say that people don't deserve a living wage because why would I want to deny somebody money to live off of? Well, listen, you weren't, making the money to live off of before anybody start calling it a living wage, so why do you deserve it now? All right, you weren't complaining about it a year ago, so now, because now you got a new phrase, now all of a sudden you deserve it? No. All right, that's why this is a great strategic win for the progressives and maybe even some social justice warriors, people who maybe call themselves that. Yet, even though this is a great strategic win because now they have entered this phrase into the, the conversation, now people know this phrase so much that I'm even talking about it, it is still factually inaccurate. Even though people are talking about it, it doesn't make it true. Now, a bunch of people talking about something does not make it accurate, doesn't make it uh, real, and does not mean that it, it can stand on its own legs. It just means it's something to talk about. The only wages that you deserve, everybody, I'm talking to everybody listening to me right now, the only wages you deserve are the wages that you are capable of uh, commanding from the open market. All right, this is the open market commandment that I talk about in the work on your game commandments. I did a whole series of episodes on this, starting episode 20, 2219, the 12 work on your game commandments. One of them is the open market commandment. The open market tells you what you're worth. Right, when I wanted to play basketball professionally and my first year out of college, nobody signed me to a contract. That was the open market letting me know what my value was to the professional basketball world. And a year later, when I did sign a contract, that was the open market letting me that my value had changed. Why? Because I took different actions and I showed myself to the people who I needed to show myself to. This is the game that you need to play. And so I'm not talking about this from some um, elevated space. I'm talking about this from, as someone who has progressed through these exact positions. I've been at the minimum wage jobs. I've been the person with the name on the door. All right, so I know exactly what, what it's like to be in all these spaces. The only wages you deserve are the ones you can get in the open market. If the open market says that you are worth $5.25 per hour, like I was when I was working at McDonald's in high school, then that's what you're worth. All right, You're not worth more just because 
your 525 is not enough to pay rent. All right, so if the money that you're earning at your job is not enough for you to pay rent at your apartment, that doesn't mean that the job owes you enough money to pay rent. That means you need to develop enough skills so that you are worth enough money to pay rent. See, it's just a matter of, it's, we're talking about the same thing. It's just a matter of how are you gonna go about getting it? See, let's say that you, for you to pay rent at your, the place that you live or a place you wanna live, you need to be making $20 an hour for 40 hours a week. But right now you're only making $10 an hour. You're making half of what you need to live as an adult. So you're saying, okay, or you're, you were told by some, some progressive, some politician or something that you read somewhere, maybe a college professor, who knows who told you this. Somebody told you, well, hey, that's a living wage. You deserve a living wage. You should be making $20 an hour, not 10, and every job should be required to give everybody at least a, a minimum living wage so that everybody can pay their bills and live the way that they wanna live. And now you're going around parading this bullshit point. I am here to tell you that is a, it is a bullshit point and I'm gonna smack you around with the truth, and here's the truth, is that you need to develop your skills so that you can command $20 an hour, not that somebody has to give you 20 because you demanded it. There's a difference between demanding something and commanding something. Demanding is when you go to someone and says, you should give this to me just because I said give it to me. Commanding is when you present yourself in such a way that someone wants to give it to you. There is a huge difference between the two. And I wanna let that point sink in there so everybody can think about it. See, when you co-man things, you don't have to go around telling everybody they have to give it to you because they wanna give it to you because you already, you've already shown that you're worth it. When you demand things, that's when you're trying to basically force your ideas down other people's throats and usually that doesn't go over too well. It might work with some people, but it won't work with everybody and it won't work forever. If I need more money to pay my expenses, uh, to pay for gas in my car and my rent and all that stuff, then what I need to do is look in the mirror and figure out how do I step up my skills so I can sell them in the open marketplace just like everybody else does. This is the open market commandment. Again, listen to episode 2219 of this masterclass and all my episodes are at workonyourgamepodcast.com by the way. So if I mention an episode and it's not in the feed because it was too far back that you can't get to it in the feed, then go to workonyourgamepodcast.com is all there. Whatever you can command in the open marketplace is your worth. Okay, if the open marketplace is not offering it to you, then you just need to go back to the drawing board and figure out, all right, how do I readjust so that I can get this in the open marketplace? Just ask yourself a better question, folks. Just ask a better question. If the open market is not giving it to you, then step your game up. So this young lady who's working at the front desk in my building, she has a very positive attitude, and I'm a big advocate, as I said, of hiring for attitude, training for skills, especially at the entry level, because the person's probably not that skilled anyway, but a good attitude, they can pretty much learn. With a positive attitude, she could probably get the money that she wants. Maybe she already got it, because like I said, I haven't seen her, so I think she left and got a different job, so we'll see. But she's not gonna get it just because she feels like she deserves it or because she's uh, calling it something different. She will get it because the open market will deem that she is worth it. And this distinction, does this matter? Absolutely it does. Point number three. Today's topic, once again, is nobody deserves a living wage unless they have earned it. Number three, there's an entire population of people in the United States especially the United States and all over the world as well. I don't live in other places, but I'll speak for the United States who are unable to command enough money in the marketplace to take care of their basic necessities. We know that this is true. All right, we have politicians who talk about this every election cycle. There's usually every campaign, there's one person saying that we need to do this, another person kind of pushing back against it. So every campaign, somebody uses this because there's a big population of people who believe it. So why not use it? This is just simple hustling. Even if they don't believe it, they use it because it's simple hustling. So there are people out there who don't make enough money at their jobs to take care of themselves financially. All right, they don't make enough money they need to cover food, clothing, and shelter. This is a true thing. And because of this, they're in a rough spot. This is, we all know this to be true. This is not new. Maybe it's new the way people are talking about it. This is not a new concept. We have a name for these people. <clears throat> people who don't make enough money, I want y'all to tell me what this name is. A person who doesn't make enough money to cover their own food, clothing, and shelter. Now let's say this person is an adult. All right, let's say they're over the age of 18, they're not living with their parents, they don't have enough money to cover their own food, clothing, and shelter. What do we call these people? Eventually, they become one thing. They become homeless. That's the word we call them. We call them homeless. This is a real thing. I'm not saying this to be funny. I'm saying it to, let's talk about things as they are, folks. That's what we do here at Work On Your Game. We talk about things as they are. When you can't cover your food, clothing, and shelter, you eventually are out of food, clothing, and shelter. That's what happens. I'm not saying this to make light of these people. I'm saying this to point out the fact that we are in a results-based business called life. When I say results, I'm not just talking about a scoreboard and trophies, we're talking about results, like, all right, what do you have? What's your situation? Where are you at? 
What can you do? What can you not do? What is, what is available to you? What's not available to you? These are all forms of results. The result of not being able to get what you need in an open marketplace is hunger and homelessness. That's what happens when you can't get what you need in an open marketplace. That's why this whole topic here of living wage and how much money you're making, how much you think you're worth, you need to have a sense of urgency about stepping your value up to the market, your value in the marketplace, stepping it up so that you can have what you want, not only what you need, but what you want. And anyone can do this. You just need the right mechanics. And of course, you got to have some game and you got to know how to put it out into the open marketplace. And listen, I can help you with this. So I'm not telling you this, no wagging my finger, just talking shit to you to make you feel bad. I'm telling you this as if, like, I'm telling you this as in, look, let's get serious about the situation so we can do something about it. And I'll tell you exactly how I can help you do it. But you got to accept the situation as it is in order for us to be able to do something about it. Because you don't, if you don't see this as something that needs to be fixed, and you're not going to fix it. The solution to your problem is go sell your skills on the open market to someone who is willing to give you what you desire. If you can't get it, then that's something that you need to fix. That's not something that the marketplace needs to fix for you. It's something that you need to fix for you. Point number four. Today's topic, once again, is nobody deserves a living wage, quote unquote, living wage. Number four, there are politicians out there, as I mentioned, who are preaching to you that we need to pay everybody a living wage. All they're doing is selling you a dream. All right, They're just trying to get themselves elected so they can keep making the money that they're making. Because check this out. Politicians who are telling you that you deserve a living wage, they ain't earning a living wage. All right, they're, earning, they're earning a whole lot of money because of the position that they have. All right, so they're talking to you about something that they're not, that's not even their reality. All right, anyone who is banking on getting a pay raise just because you feel like you deserve it, okay, you're, bait, you're betting on something that you're probably going to lose. Okay, betting on yourself is not a good idea unless you are, you have some reason to believe you have a better than 50 50 chance of winning. All right, if you're betting on yourself, you don't believe you have a better than 50-50 chance of winning, you're probably about to lose your money. All right, that's why casinos, you've never seen a casino go out of business because they lost too many bets. All right, it doesn't happen. They're rigged to take your money. All right, anybody who's betting on that, that's a bad bet. Here's what actually happens when the minimum wage gets raised. So let's, let's talk economics. So let me give everybody a very basic level economics lesson, okay? There's an there's a entry level, a living wage level economics lesson. Here's what happens. So let's say I'm running a business. And I have a staff, I have staff members and I'm paying them $10 an hour each. Now, somebody comes along, uh, Bernie Sanders becomes president and he says every business in America has to pay every worker at least $20 an hour. So if somebody's making $10, you gotta start paying them $20 an hour. What do I do? Somebody help me out. Now I got a lot of business owners who listen to this show. Some of you who are not business owners, your simple but wrong answer is Oh, well, Dre, if you got five staff members and you're paying them $10 an hour each, now just pay everybody $20 an hour each. Problem solved. Right? Just do what they told you. That is wrong. Every business owner in here knows that that's wrong because if I just double how much I'm spending on payroll every week to everybody in my staff, all right, I might go out of business. Right? I might not make enough money to just pay you twice as much as I'm paying you right now. That ain't going to work. You know what? Here's what actually happens when, if this were to go through, if something like this were to happen, if I had to stop paying you $10 and start paying you $20, you know what I'm actually going to do? I am not going to start paying a bunch of $10 people $20 an hour. That's not happening. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fire all five of you. Everyone who's making $10 an hour who works for me, and now i got to pay $20 as a minimum, I'm firing all the $10 people. You know what I'm going to do? Because now you're like, well, Jerry, now you ain't got no staff. What do you do? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go hire me two or three $20 an hour people because a $20 an hour person is better than the $10 an hour person, and I don't need as many of them to get as much done. So I'm not paying $20 to a $10 person. That's bad business. Let me ask you a question. Would you pay $10 for a $20? Would you pay $20 for a $10 product? If you deem something as worth $10, would you pay $20 for it? I mean, this is just, I'm just asking a logical question to everybody who's listening to me right now. Those of you who agree with this whole living wage idea, would you pay $20 for a $10 product? All of you are saying no right now. Okay then. So. Why would your boss pay you twice as much as they're paying you right now if you're not worth twice as much? Because if you were worth twice as much, guess what? You would already be getting it before any of this conversation came to be. This is the economic reality of quote unquote living wage and minimum wage. So those of you who are on this whole this whole horse of everybody needs to deserve a living wage, understand that if this were to really, if this were to be a real thing, many of you who are not at that level. If the living wage became $20 and right now you're making 10, you would be, you would go from 10 to zero. You wouldn't go from 10 to 20, you go from 10 to zero. Because everybody will look at you and say, okay, you are worth $10 an hour. But the minimum I can pay anybody is 20. 
So you ain't worth it, so I'm not hiring you. So you'll go from having a job at $10 an hour to no job and zero dollars an hour. This is the economic reality they don't tell you in school, folks. See, your favorite politicians don't talk about this. Your college professors don't tell you about this part. They know it. Many of them know it, not all of them know it. Many of them know this, but they won't say this out loud because then they won't have a job. Now see, I don't have a job, so I can tell you this stuff. See, I can tell you things that other people can't tell you because I, I don't face any consequences for telling you the truth. Now other people, they face consequences for telling you the truth, I don't. So that's why you need to be here and you need to tell your friends to be listening to the show. So if I got a bunch of $10 workers, I'm firing all of them if the minimum becomes 20 and I'm gonna go find me some $20 people. I ain't paying you 10, I ain't paying you $20 when you're worth 10, you, you kidding me? Would you do that? All right, if gas is worth $2 a gallon, would you pay four? That don't make no sense. If you could get it for two, why would you pay for four? You would, of course you would. That does not make any sense. Uh, what's something that we all agree on the, the general price of it? And there's so many things with different prices. Uh, I don't know. All right, a banana. Uh, I got a banana sitting here on my desk. At Whole Foods, the bananas are, organic bananas are 69 cents a pound. So should I start paying, what's twice that? $1.38 a pound for every banana? for organic bananas. If I see that there's a 69 cents one right there, would I pay $1.38 for these? No, I'll just get the 69 cents ones, why? Why would I spend more? That doesn't make any sense. I'll go broke if I keep spending more than I'm supposed to on a product, more than it's actually worth. All right, so now you $10 hour folks, you'd be jobless if this actually happens. So you should probably stop pushing this idea of a living wage. What you should do instead is push the idea of stepping your game up so that you don't have to worry about what the minimum wage is. So if I'm a business owner paying $20 to $10 people, I'm doing bad business and I won't be in business for long. So then what kind of job you gonna have then? Because I'm out of business. All right, if I gotta pay $20 every hour, guess who I'm giving it to? $20 people. All right, this is the math of a business owner. So those of you who are not business owners, you should know the math of business owners because the person who gives you a job is a business owner. They need to know their economics and if they don't master their economics and they give you more than you should be getting, they're gonna go out of business and what kind of job you gonna have then? You won't have one. See, many of you who are trying to earn these, this quote unquote living wage, you're only thinking about your math and what you get. But you, what you need to be thinking about is the person who you're trying to persuade what they need and what they want. Because if you understand their needs and their perspective, you can serve them at the highest possible level. And it'd be much easier for you to get a job and keep it. So you're trying to persuade a business owner? Understand what a business owner wants. When I was trying to get into pro basketball, I wasn't thinking about what I wanted. I knew what I wanted. I didn't have to think about that that much. I didn't think about what do the teams want that I'm trying to sign. I'm trying to sign with. What do they want? I got to tell them what they want because that's the only way I'm going to get a deal. You understand what I'm saying? See, this is what actually happens when the minimum wage gets raised. But hey, who am I to ruin a good story with actual facts? Hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> but this is the deal of what happens with a, a living wage or a minimum wage that, again, Many of you are spending you know, tens of thousands of dollars on college campuses and they're not even telling you this because they're incentivized not to. But now you know, all right? So you can stop paying your college tuition. You can just come to work on your game university, get all the education you need this year. Let's recap today's class, which is nobody deserves a living wage. There was a young lady in my building talking about she wanted a living wage, she put some numbers on it. And she had the right intentions, but she's young, she's impressionable, she's been told some garbage by some people who are very manipulative, but I'm helping everybody out thanks to that conversation I had with her here today. Point number one, this phrase is a strategic victory for progressives who are uh, pushing these new ideas. They are morphing the language. They're basically in a, a battle against the dictionary and changing the language of different phrases to make it sound different and softer and try to expand the what is acceptable in certain places like minor attracted persons instead of a pedophile or a person capable of giving birth instead of just saying a woman. So it's no wonder that you know, a bunch of people who are listening to these folks who have a big reach and they have a very compelling emotionally charged message, they are driving this conversation. They are, act, they are doing a good job, okay? I'm not being facetious. They're doing a good job of getting this message out. But people like myself, who I'm a supporter of the dictionary, I'm not gonna allow this to just go on without saying anything about it. You know? So that's why I'm making this point. What used to be called a living, what is now called a living wage by some people, used to be called a minimum wage. I'm even fine with calling it a starting wage or an entry level wage. These jobs are set up to give you a path to growth. Just like Calvin in the old McDonald's commercials back in the 90s, eventually became a manager of a store because he started as a, a nobody with no skills and eventually made himself worth it. Point number two. 
I explained in episode 21 to them. You only deserve something when you have it. You do not deserve something just because you said you should have it. That's called demanding things. And usually you don't get things when you demand them unless you have some type of leverage. But you can't get anything if you command it, meaning you show yourself to be worth it, which makes people want to give it to you, not feel like they have to give it to you because you are you know, telling them it's been decreed to them. Usually that doesn't work. Now, your host, again, I have worked at probably more entry-level jobs than most of the people who are listening to this show. So I'm qualified to speak on this. I've been at the entry level, I've been at the boss level, and I know what it feels like to be everywhere in between. And in the Work On Your Game Commandments, episode 2219, the open market commandment is you are worth whatever you can command on the open market, whatever the open market is willing to give you. If they're not willing to give it to you, it's because you're not worth it yet. Doesn't mean you can't have it, it just means you gotta work on your game. Number three, there's an entire population in the United States who are unable to command enough money to take care of their basic necessities, like food, clothing, and shelter. You know what we call these people? We call them homeless. That's what happens when you can't take care of your basic necessities. And if you're in that position or close to it, or you see yourself on the way, it's not that you need to go to your employer and demand more money. What you need to do is figure out how can you negotiate with the marketplace to where you are offering enough value that you can get as much as you want through commanding, not demanding. And number four, there are politicians who are preaching to you that they need to pay, we need to pay everybody a living wage. All they're doing is selling you a dream to get themselves elected and they can keep making the money that they're making. Because I guarantee you what they're making, it ain't the minimum wage. It ain't a living wage either. There's a lot more than that. So anybody who's making on getting a pay raise because you feel like you deserve it, uh, you're probably going to lose because when a business owner and all the business owners listen to me right now, any of you who takes care of payroll, you know exactly what I'm talking about right here. And if I'm wrong on this, any of you business owners, you send me a text message and let me know that I'm wrong, but I know that I'm right. So none of you should be telling me that I'm wrong on this. If I have to pay a $10 person $20, I'm firing the $10 person and I'm going to go hire somebody twice as good as them and pay them $20. So the $10 person, you actually go from making $10 to making zero because you are no longer worth what the minimum amount is, which is really an emergency. That's the real emergency that you need to be worrying about. And that's the one that your college professors and your favorite politicians and people on Twitter are not telling you. But I just told you. So now you know it and now you need to get urgent. This needs to be an emergency five alarm blaze for you go do something about the fact that your value is not high enough to get what you need to take care of your basic needs i can help you out with that two things for you to do number one text me at my number which is 305-384-6894 so you get my daily motivation text message as a matter of fact speaking of living wages the company that runs this text community i just talked about this i think in a previous episode no it might not have might not have been on here but the text community that i the company that i use for this because the way that the what's it called the the carriers like t-mobile verizon at&t etc they're making all these new rules about texting because any of you be getting all these kind of crazy robo texts and texts from people who you don't even know and they're like spam text messages now same way they got spam in emails now they got spam in text messages so now the carriers are basically putting up a paywall to make it harder for people to be sending these things so the cost of sending text messages like my daily motivation are about to go up exponentially yes i'm talking about multiples and if i told you the numbers of what they just told me this conversation i had a few days ago you probably wouldn't believe it maybe you would but you i would hope that you wouldn't because these numbers are about to go up crazy but as of now i'm going to keep sending out the daily motivation text but that may change but text me anyway so you're in my text community because they about to put my numbers up like i'm talking like 10x cost for sending these daily motivation texts and that's not a joke but anyway and so you want to talk about economics, there's, some, there's an economics one for you right there. And number two, go to workonyourgame.net, workonyourgame.net. That's where you can get access to my 45 minute training where I talked about how to take your income to the next level. If you're at that six figure level, you're ready to go to the seven figure level, but you don't want to run yourself into the ground in the process of doing it because you feel like you might be on a treadmill already just to be at six figures. You want to get to the next level. How am I going to do that without running faster? There's a way to do it. There's a way to be more strategic than tactical. I will help you on this. First of all, watch my training. At the end of the training, I'm going to tell you how to get on a call with me and we can talk about exactly how I can map this out for you. That's at workonyourgame.net. Work on your game. Dre, all day.